Today I'm gonna to share the experience I had my first year selling on Amazon FBA. My hope is that this will help you understand that things don't always have to go perfectly to make this business work. Also, even if your experience isn't the same as mine, you may get some great insight on how it applies directly to your situation. I'm gonna go through the ups and downs that I encountered and I hope this video will help you with your Amazon FBA journey. It's always tough in the beginning, but I hope to share with you some of the things that I've learned. You'll hear about my mistakes and how they all led to my success. Welcome to the Sprint to Profit for Amazon Sellers channel, where we help sellers like you grow and scale on Amazon with no hype or black hat tactics. Hi, I'm Isaac, and I'm not only a real active Amazon seller who has sold millions of dollars on Amazon, but I've also coached more than a thousand students since 2015. And in this process, I help them make the Amazon FBA model a highly sustainable and profitable lifestyle business. So before I discovered I could create an Amazon business, my life was very different than it is today. I was working at an electric go-kart facility. I was actually the operations manager there. I didn't know anything about Amazon. I knew I could buy stuff on Amazon. I think I purchased maybe three or four things on Amazon. And I actually started becoming friends with a guy who, be, who was actually selling on Amazon. And through just kind of speaking with him and becoming friends with him and hanging out with him, we started talking about maybe I could come work with him and really just wanted to see if like this was really a real thing. So we really talked, you know, in, in, a, in more depth about what this business entailed. He was showing me his business model, what his brand was, and he basically wanted me to apply my operation skills to his business to help his, his business grow. And I took a leap of faith and started working with him and didn't, like I said, didn't know much about the Amazon business, but actually the first week before I was supposed to start working with him, the Sunday night before the Monday that I was supposed to start, I actually got a call from him and said, our Amazon account has just been shut down. Uh, it was an account that was doing about 300,000 a month at the time. And that basically just meant that I thought that I was screwed and I was out of a job. I just quit my other job, so I really couldn't go back to that job. And I just thought that I'd made the biggest mistake in the world. However, we got back into the office the next day um, and just started talking with, you know, through the whole process and see what we could do. So we actually managed to recreate the business and in about six months, it was actually doing even better. We were at about $500,000 in sales per month. So we were able to get everything back and it was kind of a great learning process because in that process of just like going from scratch again and doing everything, I, as I, I was actually able to see the Amazon business of what was really going on. But that was basically how I discovered that you could even do an Amazon business was just through talking with him and then kind of running his office and then running his, his business for him for the first few years. And that was a great experience, but I wouldn't say that that's typical for most people. But that has helped me lead to be where I am today, but then I actually went off and branched on my own business as well. So when I actually decided to start my own Amazon business, I basically branched off from working with the person that I was working with before. We, we kind of broke our partnership just so that way he could go on and focus on what he needed to do. And I could go off and do kind of my own thing as well. So I got started selling in my first year and that was 2016. And in 2016, I decided I was going to start my own brand. And what I did was I kind of thought about who I wanted to reach as an ideal client. Um, you know, I thought, you know, there's a certain section of Amazon that I really thought was going to be, you know, underserved and that was the automotive category. So I kind of went into the automotive category thinking, you know, there's going to be some really good products in here that I got to really figure out. And I started to do some product research and basically built a brand. And I've been doing that brand since 2016, like I said, and it's, you know, doing pretty well. So that was kind of my goal was to find my target audience, which I was actually pretty interested in as well as was, was the automotive category. It wasn't my favorite category, but it was something I, I knew quite a bit about. And so I was really wanting to go into that. And I knew it was an underserved category. And I knew that I could go in there and find products that were really going to be successful for me on Amazon. So I actually had a research kind of spreadsheet about products, all the product ideas that I had. And I kind of put all these product ideas into a sheet that said, you know, here's the profit margins you're going to hit. Here's kind of the return on investment that you're gonna get. Also other things like how much is the order gonna cost, how many co like how much is the cost of units and all that kind of stuff. So I kind of put all that into a spreadsheet. They were all based around what my ideal client and my brand would be. And then I basically started narrowing them down and saying which ones were gonna give me the best return for the least amount of investment and really get some profitable money back in every single month. 
So I kind of na narrowed it all down and I actually did start with two products. It wasn't that I was trying to start with two products. It was actually kind of done by accident because I knew I wanted to start with one product. And it just happened that I started working with a factory and they were getting further along with the process and something just didn't seem right. And I was asking them like, hey, can I get like a sample of these before you finish production? I just want to see if everything's going right. And they finished it before I, they could even send like a sample. And when it was done, it was completely like low quality, not even close to what I was asking for. So then I said, you gotta redo this because here's what I'm looking for and you have the design file and here's what you're giving me. So they redid the whole order and they came back with something almost completely exactly the same as what they'd done before, which was nowhere near what I wanted. And I was like, I don't understand how you guys are getting this from what I want. So basically I had to start from scratch, but in the meantime, I knew that I had another product in the wings that I could get going pretty quickly. It only had like a two week turnaround. So I just went ahead and started with that while I was sourcing another factory for the first product. So that first product, all those errors and all that time wasted with the first factory cost me about three months of time. So I couldn't get that first product launched faster than the second product. So I ended up launching two products because they both got done at the same time and it got done just before quarter four. So it was right around the early part of November, late part of October, and I got them in, and that is technically in quarter four, but not quite in the peak selling period of quarter four. So it was good to get them in there, started getting them launched, and basically they started selling pretty well right off the bat, which was great because I kind of had a launch process and, and plan in place as well. So some of the biggest hurdles I faced during the first year on Amazon, well, First, it was that factory with my first product that just really screwed things up. And I ended up having to pay them a thousand some dollars just to give them the deposit because they wouldn't return it. I went through Alibaba trade assurance and everything, but instead of going through the whole litigation and arbitration thing with Alibaba, I just decided to let it go. And basically from there, there was some issues about, you know, what products I was going to bring out, you know, ongoing. And then also, uh, you know, how am I going to launch these things and how am I going to get ranking and all that stuff and PPC. Those were pretty, those are pretty common hurdles that everybody faces. But another thing that I would say I faced was in selecting my third product, I actually selected that in the next summer. So within my first year, and for some reason, I either just didn't get the keyword research right, or I didn't quite understand where the sales were coming from because I launched the product and I ordered 4,000 units and I was gonna do it 2,000 units in the US, 2,000 units in the UK and expanded that product too fast without really researching much of it and it didn't really work out. And so that was one of my biggest hurdles was trying to figure out why I kind of wasn't successful there and I did kind of figure it out in the end it was the, the keyword research wasn't done right and you know the launching into two, two pro, uh, and launching into two marketplaces at the same time without getting successful in one first and without really doing proper research on the other one was really the keys that I, I learned as like a driver of don't do that again. Before I go further into what my journey has been like, I'd like to hear from you in the comments below. What are your burning questions about starting your business or making your existing Amazon business profitable? What challenges or roadblocks have you come up against and how have you overcome them? Let us know in the comments below. So when I went to start selling on Amazon, I actually got them up and running by having a proper launch process, I had a few things in mind. First, I needed to optimize my listings and I really knew that I had to speak to my ideal client throughout my listing. I had to make sure my bullet points are right, my title looks good, you know, my images were pretty on point. They didn't have to be perfect, they just had to be pretty close, uh, you know, really good and, and look professionally done. And then I really started to focus on how am I gonna get visibility. So I needed to get some, some sponsored ads, some advertising going. I also used a launch service at the time called Viral Launch to kind of spur some initial sales. I didn't do a, a big blast with that or anything. I just wanted to get some initial sales in there. And pretty much that was it. I didn't have any sort of review process in place. I did have an email sequence that I set up and I still use that to this day to get ongoing reviews. But I didn't really ask friends and family or have like a bunch of you know email people. I didn't have a list of any kind. I had a Facebook group set up, but it really didn't it didn't help spur any sort of traction. So I really relied on Amazon's processes and, and just using, you know, what they had on that platform. And that was really how I got started without any sort of like, you know, crazy tricks or anything. I just had to get good at learning what I needed to focus on. And that was all on Amazon, you know, optimizing my listing, getting the ratings and reviews, and then making sure that I got advertising and visibility through Amazon ads. So I actually have two very costly mistakes that I made. The first one came when I was working with my old partner 
in his business, we actually had a product up and going and there was it was getting about $9,000 in sales per day. So it was about 300 units at about $30, so about $9,000 in sales per day. And I went to put it in a variation with another product of a different size. So I think it was like a 90 count bottle and we were trying to get to a 100 count, 180 count bottle and combine them in the same listing. And you'll see that on Amazon if you go shopping for anything, you'll see like multiple sizes or bottle counts or unit counts or whatever. And I went to do a variation and this was back before really Amazon sellers knew how to do this. It was like 2013. And when I did this, I messed something up because there was like 300 and some reviews on it. And when I did it, they, they basically removed all the reviews. And normally when you do it, they kind of come back and they, they show up later. But this time they didn't. There was only like three or four reviews on there and they were all one stars and we didn't know what happened. But suffice it to say, that product that was selling $9,000 a day, which is about $270,000 a month in sales, stopped getting sales completely. So that product was never able to come back. So if you look at just the, the 30 day mistake, that's a quarter million dollars of a mistake that I made right there. And if you multiply that over the course of the entire year or years it's been since then, that's a multi-million dollar mistake that I made early on. It was probably within the first two or three months that I was kind of learning this. Um, in my business, it would be my third product probably. And that was just not doing the keyword research right and launching into multiple marketplaces that I mentioned earlier. That probably cost me about eight to $10,000. It's a much, much lower cost that it, it cost me. But in the end, it was actual hard cost. It was hard inventory. And that was just all gone. I had just pretty much just to uh, dispose of it. I didn't even re return it to me. I did donate some to some like, um, uh, you know, auto detailing shops in the United States, just some random local places. But for the most part of those 4,000 units I had, almost all of them were disposed of and, and, and never really sold that well. So if I was to ever nail down one thing that I thought was my unique skill to be, you know, big, bigger and better and, and more successful than most people on Amazon is the fact that I know that there's always a solution to every problem. And when I do this, I, I look at, you know, even when I make gigantic mistakes, I'll go, okay, look, I know I did something wrong and I need to figure out exactly what it was. And then I'm going to make sure I don't do that again. And then I'm also going to kind of reverse engineer how to actually make that a positive spin for my business. So instead of looking at it as all negative and doom and gloom, I really think this is a learning experience and I get over it quickly. Like, yes, it feels really bad when you lose money for somebody else or when you lose money in your own business, it feels pretty bad. But what you got to do is you got to separate your emotion from the actual actions that you take in the business and continually doing this over the years is actually what's led me to being more successful on Amazon than most people have been. For anyone looking to start their Amazon business, a piece of advice that I give to you is probably just be persistent and don't quit because you really can't fail in a business or anything in life unless you actually quit. So if you do want to get started, you probably want to make sure you know what you're doing. So it's great that you're here watching this channel, learning some insights, but you probably need to get some proper training. Otherwise, all the money that you put in is pretty much just a guess or just a, you know rubbing a magic lamp and hoping a genie pops out and grants your wishes or playing the lottery. Because without that actual structure and those business processes in place and planning your business out, you're not going to really know what you can actually get out of the business and what you actually need to put into it to get what you want out of it. So I'd highly recommend you get some structure and you get some planning and you actually get some training to understand how you do this. So in my first year of business through my, my second brand, not from when I was working with the, my, my past business partner, but in my first brand that I, I launched outside of you know working with him, I actually had a business that only had two products really that I ever sold. The third one did nothing. It just cost me money. But even after that first year, I had $375,000 in revenue and $65,000 in profit. And from that profit, I actually paid myself to live on it from that money as well. So in that time, I actually was able to create a lifestyle business straight from Amazon in my very first year. So I was able to pay myself, live off that, and I actually grow the business as well. So that's what I was, I'm, I'm kind of hoping for you guys to be able to do. And you know, I didn't have a million dollars in the first year, but at the same time, I didn't want to push myself to get, you know, 10, 15 products out there. Cause I'd actually been pumping, you know, products out for the past three and a half years. I wanted to kind of settle back and actually make sure that I was doing it the right way. So that way, 
you know, it was more like how anybody would do it because, you know, if you're trying to do it too fast, too much, then you're gonna get burnt out. And I didn't wanna get burnt out. So I did it at the right pace and I actually built a lifestyle business within my first year on Amazon. Hopefully you were able to glean some insight from my story about my first year selling on Amazon. If you would like to see a checklist of what it takes to get started on Amazon, then click the link for the getting started checklist that's below this video. This also signs you up to our email list where you'll get real actionable tips and training on how to be a thriving Amazon seller. And if you found this video helpful, give us a thumbs up and don't forget to hit the little bell to subscribe to our channel for more videos to help you thrive on Amazon. Click on the link to learn more.